Okay, welcome back for session two here at Photo Plus Expo at the Nikon Theater. I can only tell you the next ambassador that's coming up, the next photographer coming up is somebody who's inspired me for many, many years with the way she approaches the street and travel photography. Just this week I saw pictures of New York City that I don't think I've ever seen before because of the way she uses fisheye lenses. So let me introduce the Nikon Theater stage, Nikon Ambassador Deb Sandage, the art and technique of travel photography. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for having me here at Photo Plus. I'm excited to speak with you on behalf of Nikon about some travel ideas. So I want to take you through some of the what I'm shooting, why I shoot it, and how I shoot it. And I want you to come away with ideas that you can apply to your own photography. So I started here, sorry, volume, can you hear me now, a little bit better? So I'll take you through some ideas of travel photography, near and far, so not just New York City, but also in some of the other places that I travel. So I started here in New York City, and one of the ideas was I wanted to work with time lapse. So I love the idea of working with time lapse. So I worked with this on the Nikon Z7. So working with the idea of setting up the camera so I can shoot every two seconds and the camera will automatically create a beautiful video for me, which is absolutely fun to do. So what I wanted to do, because I shoot with the D850 and the Nikon D5, I wanted to see how the Z7 performed the way I like to shoot. And so I was really happy with the idea of working with that same kind of time lapse and those ideas. And then it started to rain, so I ran out of time. <laughs> so absolutely working with the idea of a fisheye. You know, it's so totally different. Nikon came out with an amazing fisheye lens. It's an eight to 15 millimeter circular fisheye. It also gives you the 15 millimeter rectangular image. But I love this. I feel like I'm a child lost in the middle of this big city with the way that the converging buildings are. You know, I love the idea of that. So that's one way I like to shoot. And shooting in midday, you know, often we feel like we have to make those hero shots and they have to be like at the golden hour or they have to be at the blue hour. But here in the middle of the day works great. So I'm narrowing my aperture, stopping down to f16 or f11 and we can create these beautiful little sparkles of sunbursts in the image. So that's an idea I love to work with in an image, just to have a little bit of sparkle. So the same lens at 15 millimeters get a very different, very different look. So I think that this lens is one of the most versatile and creative lenses that I have. So again, I feel like a child. I'm in the middle of all these buildings and, and it gives you a really different sense of being there. So if you've been in Times Square, you know how busy it is, you know, that there's so many people there. And the idea is that I just want to give a vision of what it's like just to be surrounded by the building. So uh, lenses are like paint brushes. So you have, if you're an artist, you have a choice on how you want to be able to portray the subject. So often it's the lens choice that you use. So here I'm working with the 15-2, 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye lens. So time lapse, so I like to work with the idea of conveying a sense of motion. What happens over time in the photograph? So I'm used to working with that idea with my 850. I'll put, use a 15 stop neutral density filter, which slows down the exposure and lets the clouds be painted across the sky. To me, that's very artistic and very creative. And that's an idea I wanted to consider. So I was lucky I was able to get a pre-production Nikon Z7 and I want to put the 15 stop neutral density filter on and see what happens. How is that gonna work compared to the D850? And I loved it. All the clouds are painted beautifully across the sky. So the image becomes, instead of a moment frozen in time, we have a moment that, can, we have several minutes of exposure, this is about three minutes, that conveys a sense of motion and time passing. So I love to work with that idea. The blue hour. So does they, has anybody shot during the blue hour? That, yeah, isn't that a beautiful time? To me, that's w when you can make some gorgeous hero shots. So I love to wait till the blue hour. So again, I'm working with that pre-production Nikon Z7 camera and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I'm very attached to my 
24 to 72.8. I've used it for like 10 years. It's all beat up. I love it. And I had this new one that works with the D70, uh, with the Z7. And I feel like it was exactly, it performed exactly as I needed to, exactly the same. So we have like a six second exposure during the beautiful blue hour. So you have wonderful clouds that begin to build over the cityscape. A little bit of action here on 34th Street. So again, you have a really wonderful rendition of the city at night. So I like to shoot during the day. I like to shoot at night. And I'll show you a few more ideas of working with that. Brooklyn Ridge Park, I, I love this. I went down again, I took my Z7, I had shot also this recently. Uh, this was about 45 minutes after sunset, so it was really more towards dark. But what happens automatically is shooting that late into the evening, the clouds are blurred. So when you have the softness of the clouds, that allows your subject to stand out. And also it smooths the water into a mirror perfect reflection. And when that happens, it's just that your image becomes more serene, more peaceful, more graceful. So it just is an easy way to work with this. This is about a three minute exposure, just because it was 45 minutes late into the evening. I also had the advantage of their light sources behind me were automatically light painting the posts. So I had the benefit of the light source brightening that up a little bit for me. So anytime you want to convey a sense of motion, you can use low light, or you could use something like neutral density filters to be able to control the light. So a little bit further down, so after the blue R, you walk down to this area right here. Have you shot here before? This is, uh, yes, it's a beautiful place to shoot. I love this. I'm waiting for the boats. This is like and this interesting idea. So over 30 seconds, I get the smooth water, which is what I was going for. Narrowing the aperture, I get these beautiful points of light. That adds glamour to the photograph. So I, I love the idea of just adding a little sparkle to a cityscape. And then I'm waiting for the boats. So I'm pretty much in position. I have my cable release, and I'm waiting, <laughs> waiting for those boats to pass by. And they add a splash of color. So it's like uh, light painting, but I don't have to do it. So it's automatic. So I love the idea. And you can repeat this with your own photography. So if you're in an area that you have a river or some, that same kind of feature, you can work with the idea. So I love to, I, I fall in love with cities, and this is why I get beautiful ideas on how to work with an image. Okay, this is the frenzy of the cityscape, the city that never sleeps. So it's crazy fun. So I took my Nikon Z7 and I perched it on a ledge and then I was able to put my little tilt monitor back so I could see it. And then I set up my camera for time lapse and was able to get a really fun kind of a frenzy look at the city of the city that never sleeps. So to me, that kind of um, gives you an idea of what it feels like to be there at that moment. So it's crazy busy, crazy busy. So after a while, there's a little bit of time where I want to be able to get away from the city and come back to something more peaceful. <laughs> so I've had the city, I want to come back into my hometown of Florida and be able to work with the idea of capturing images. So one of the things I love to do is scout. So I like to look around for different ideas and, and where I'm going to shoot. Often that means I'm getting there before sunrise and it's pretty much dark, but then you can see where the clouds are going to develop over time. You kind of walk around and you get a feel for you, where you want to start taking your pictures. So I, I, that's something I love to do. And again, going back to that idea about conveying a sense of motion in your photographs, 15th of a second, just enough to be able to convey a little bit of motion. So if I freeze the action of an image, that to me in a landscape photo can, can create a kind of a tense look. So if I slightly extend my shutter speed, I get a very painterly rendition. And that's the idea that I'm going for when I'm able to make the shot. So working with that idea as sunrise, And boom, you know, it's amazing. I can see the clouds coming up. This is down in Juneau Beach, one of the rare, fabulous mornings that it was just absolutely incredible being able to make a shot. So I'm using my widest lens. I have a 14 to 24 millimeter lens that I'm very attached to. 
that also works with my Nikon D7. So that those are the things that I'm really finding out about and I'm super excited about being able to use the different camera with my familiar lenses without any t image degradation. So again, you can see what's happening here. I could have frozen the action, but it's a different feeling, a different depth of feeling, and a different emotion of having this mo the water here. So I got to this location uh, well before sunrise. And again, I'm looking to see where the clouds are going to develop, where I want to stand. So I'm often the only person out there on the beach, and it's uh, dark 30. But I can see, I can see the light. I can see that golden, the band on the horizon and also these, these really interesting cloud formations. So again, I'm, I'm waiting and I position myself with my camera. To work with something like this, I'm working with a two second exposure. Again, it's more abstract, it's more painterly and it's more creative and it's just a wash of color. So it's like I photographed it with my camera, but it also felt like it was painting it. So it, it appeals to the inner artist in me to be able to work with that idea. Also to work with this, so I, you can see how similar the clouds were. So about 25 minutes later, I walked down to a position where there were some rugged rocks and also the waves. And I love the way that the clouds were across the horizon. So think about also how white balance affects the mood of an image. You know, certainly this is something you can change in post, but often I like to, to do it ahead of time. So the colors will influence your response and your reviewer's response to your image. So a little bit warmer because the sun's coming up, just changing that just a little bit, but getting this softness, playfulness, this gentleness of the waves as they break across the rugged rocks. And I, I love to work with that idea. If you work with an exposure that's a little bit longer, then you get a different image altogether. So here the rocks are, but I'm working with a several second exposure. And my idea here was to show how the patterns, see how the waves are very playful and they're moving in between the rocks. So it begins to become very painterly. So you are the artist with a camera. You have a lot of creative options just by using certain tools and certain lenses. So here I was able to get the beautiful golden glow in the rocks and the waves moving through, through the rocks to create these beautiful patterns. So I was teaching it in Chicago, and I love Chicago. And I've been to, I think this is one of the most beautiful fountains in the world. I, it's, it's amazing, it's called Buckingham Fountain. And if you go to Chicago, there's a lot of beautiful places to shoot. But my feeling for this photograph, why I took it, is I wanted you to feel like you're standing in front of this, fount of this fountain, and, and you're viewing what I'm viewing, and experiencing what I'm experiencing. But I had to wait, it was, uh, there were no clouds, and so I waited for a little bit, and about 10 o'clock at night, there were some beautiful clouds that began to flow across the horizon. So as that happened, that's when I started to make my photographs. That to me was the more expressive time. So you have all these beautiful clouds that are painted across the sky during that 30 second exposure. And using a lens like a 16 to 35, which is really, really wide, you have nothing in the foreground except for the fountain. So you feel like you're there. And that's, that's what I hope to project, and that's the idea. Are you shooting manual? What are you doing with your ISO? Usually my ISO is the lowest, because I want the 30 seconds. So if I, I don't want to freeze the action, if I increase, that's a great question, because if I increase my ISO, it'll freeze the action. So my, IS, my lowest ISO is 64. So I keep that low and I may need to narrow my aperture, and that automatically will create the long exposures. Manual. Manual for these shots. So I went into Canada. No, it was so late at night, I didn't need a neutral density. It's a good question. Will I need a neutral density filter? Sure, during the day when you find you're at the limits of your camera, you've already narrowed your aperture and you've already had your lowest ISO, you need a tool to help it, you extend the exposures. And that could be a neutral density filter, certainly. So Canada, I've, I've never been to Quebec City and it was absolutely delightful. So I love to work with the idea 
of creating something that was whimsical and fun. And well, I had come across this location at night, and I thought, oh, I've got to come back during the day. It's going to be amazing. And that was, I, that's one of the things I love to do when I shoot is like to scout. So I spend a lot of time walking I'm on the street, trying to find the best locations. And when I came across this, this I, the only thing that crossed my mind, get the fisheye. <laughs> get my 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye, 18 millimeters, and I can add the sparkle by narrowing the aperture f11, making it smaller, and then adds a sense of sparkle and glamour to the photograph. So this was very whimsical and fun, and I, I love shooting that photograph. And that's what I want you to come away with, too, that same idea. When you come across something, you can repeat the same type of experience. But Montreal was an absolute blast. Also, when you're working, you can work with silhouettes. When I first started shooting, I loved the idea of silhouettes because you have the mystery and intrigue of your subject. So I'm exposing for the brightest part of the frame and allowing all the color and the subject to come through. So you get something that's a little bit different. And this was the uh, convention center in Montreal. And so this is where scouting is super important. So you get to ask people, so what, what's good to see around this area? What's happening? And I like to use apps, and I do a lot of research. So I'll go on Google. I use a couple different apps called Timeout. But the best thing is asking people, is there something happening in this area? Yeah, it's Canada Day. You should come back tomorrow and sit right here. It's up on a rooftop cafe. And so I was able to sit at a rooftop cafe, have my camera set up, have my tripod, my cable release in one hand, and my hors d'oeuvres in the other hand. <laughs> so I got to enjoy this beautiful experience, but simply by asking. So scouting, asking people what's happening, th those things are very valuable to you as you are traveling. Colorado. I've never been to Aspen, Colorado, so I'm super excited to have the chance and the opportunity to go to Aspen. And this is what I hope to find. I was hoping that there'd be beautiful blue sky and that there would be lots of color. And I was, I was very lucky to have this. So again, I wanted that feeling that I'm here and I'm surrounded by all these beautiful aspen trees as I look up. And to me, that's how the, you know, I could shoot them uh, with a different lens, but you know, to, you're in the frame here. You're feeling like you're part of that environment. That's what I like to be able to work with. And then isolating certain subjects. So I had a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and I saw that the aspen trees were reflecting on the water. So to add to the narrative, the visual narrative of the story, shooting with my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, just isolating part of the subject. And you'll notice that I composed it so there's a diagonal flow, a rhythm throughout the photograph. Sometimes it's really easy to focus so everything's straight and narrow. But that diagonal flow helps create a more expressive image. So that's an easy way to work with them. Fisheye again. I couldn't resist. So I had that circular fisheye lens at 8 millimeters. And again, just got into, and I'm literally standing in the trees, looking right up, shooting, and then narrowing the aperture, just getting that little sparkle. And it just adds a little bit more drama and a little bit more expression to the image. Isolating the subject. So I love this. I, I, I saw that the, we had such a line of aspen trees. So again, I'm working with layers. Anytime you can create layers of information, you've got the gold of the aspen, the ruggedness of the rocks, and also that blue sky. And then also working again with that diagonal flow. Just very easy, very simple to do. When I was at this location, I got here about four in the morning, because I've never been to it's the Maroon Bells area, so it was a beautiful place to go. And of all places on the planet, I heard a voice, and I looked next to me, it was Mandy Lee. I don't know if you follow Mandy Lee, but she's a great presenter. And she was here, too, at the same time. So, you never know, it's a very small world. San Francisco. So what I like to do is, again, scout. I like to find out where I'm going to be shooting, and stay in an area where I can just walk and get out and find out what's going on. So I, I love this. I'm staying next to the Ogilvy San Francisco Bridge, but I want to be able to shoot this at sunrise. So I get down before the sun comes up, 
walk to the seawall. And I mean, you, these are beautiful. If you Google this, you can find this. So research is super helpful. So I have these interesting elements in the foreground, these interesting old pilings. And I love to do that. If you've looked at some other work, you'll, you'll see that I like to work with that idea working with that. So before sunrise, as the sky really gets that beautiful glow, I'm working with that. And again, working with that same idea, 30 seconds, smooths the water, has a very tranquil. So if I would have shot at like 5.6 and a high ISO and froze the action, then I would have had the choppy waves. And, and that's sort of what you're feeling when you see the picture. So here it's smooth, a bit more tranquil, and a little bit more peaceful. Instagram Alley. So this is actually that eight to 15 millimeter fisheye lens. So working with the idea of shooting, but I cropped it square for Instagram. But San Francisco is full of these little nuggets. But it's interesting that you can use a fisheye lens. I think the idea of the fisheye is, is very, very versatile. So you saw some of the types of images. Here's just one square. And the cable cars. I love to shoot the cable cars. So you saw that I was out at dark 30 shooting in the morning. This is one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so the days are very long as a photographer, but I wanted to be able to get the cable cars coming down the track. So it looks a little sketchy, like I'm standing in the street. I'm not standing in the street. <laughs> so I'm using an 80 to 400 millimeter lens that puts me visually into the intersection, keeps you safe. <laughs> so, and, but yet, over 10 seconds, then you have this motion of the other cars throughout the image. So to me, it creates a very expressive image. And I, and I love to work with that, because I want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in the middle of traffic. This cable car is so close. But this is what happens on Market Street at 1 a.m. And it's close. And I, I shoot with friends, and I'm very, uh, I'm very close to my hotel, so it is safe. Diagonal flow, again, I love to work with this. You know, in the brightness of day, it doesn't have to be the golden hour, or the blue hour. The clouds begin to form about mid-morning. So I had the beautiful lupin and the wonderful clouds and the red, golden, green. So the graphic qualities of this image is something I, what I wanted to work with. So I'm getting everything in clear focus here with the beautiful clouds. Bryce Canyon, love this area. So here's just about the rugged rocks and the beautiful snow and the very graphic qualities of an image. So being able to capture this, this, this is a march. I was doing a tour with a Nikon and Afar. So what lens was this? The fish eye. <laughs> but I could shoot the cliffs and I could shoot the, the, all the, the trees, but it didn't give you that feeling of being inside and all this was around you. So you're, it, it kind of gives you a sense of place in the world. So I, I love to be able to work with that idea. Nature is amazing. This, this heart was, was absolutely gorgeous. And again, using that opportunity. So I had to move around to find that sparkle and incorporate that into my photograph. So that, to me, gave that extra dimension of an image. Again, beautiful paths working through Antelope Canyon. So into China, again, working with the idea of a silhouette. So here I had to get to this location at dark 30 because hundreds of people come to Angkor Wat to be able to experience this. But I loved just the shape of the, and the mystery of the image. So working with the idea of exposing for an area outside of my subject. So the subject is portrayed as a silhouette. And then working with the idea of just isolating the subject of a young monk. I loved what was, what was around him. He had such a beautiful pose and yet get this wonderful history of architecture in the frame. So I love to work with that idea. And also, this is a floating village. People actually live on the river here. And it is amazing to see how they live. And I was just, I, I love the expanse of this. And the clouds were absolutely phenomenal. So for me, as an artistic choice, I wanted to be able to pull out that fisheye lens again. If you hold the fisheye lens perfectly level, you get an ultra ride photograph. So I love the versatility of that lens. And then working towards blue hour, I, I love to work with that. Reflections, you've got the blue hour and you've got the fog. To me, this is a very expressive time to be able to make photographs. 
So lastly, I'll take you to London really quick. Tower Bridge, my favorite place to shoot. <laughs> I love this. But think about what we talked about at the beginning of this. Remember the 15th of a second where you can convey a sense of motion with the waves? The same 15th of a second gives you that whoosh from the bus. So you feel like you have to back away. So it gives you that wonderful sense of motion in the photograph. So I love to be able to shoot Tower Bridge. So here I am, you can reach me here. Deb Sandage on social media, you can find me there. But what I'd love to end with, is one of my favorite videos from the Nikon D7. It is so easy to be able to shoot with the Z7 and create beautiful videos. So I was able to work with this and, and create this shot. So in my bag, in my kit, is Nikon D850 and absolutely the Z7. And when I was here just shooting by myself in New York, I had a Z7 in the 24 millimeter lens and my fish eye, <laughs> so it was absolutely perfect. But I want to thank you so much for your time this morning and, and thank you for coming, really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Icon Ambassador Deb Sandage. We're going to have a 15 minute